and we did have life for a brief second. What's going on guys, welcome back to another video on the Cultures channel. Alright, so it's New Year's Eve, Happy New Year to everyone out there on YouTube watching. Um, and today I've got a special little video for everyone to enjoy. So, I went out with a friend this afternoon, um, or rather this morning, and he was out doing a little bit of scrap collection. And I managed to pick up the Cell Optiplex 790 PC, uh, or just the tower. Now, it's a really lovely case, it's in pretty good condition, um, it needs a bit of a clean obviously, uh, but it's other than, other than that it's in pretty good condition so I thought yeah I'll have it, why not. Um, unfortunately it was in a skip and due to the bad weather that we've had over the past few weeks in England, the skip was full of water. Now I'm not talking about a little bit of water, I'm talking about um, probably... I don't know, maybe up to probably the Dell sign in water. So it was quite deeply immersed, I would say probably like 10 inches of water. Maybe a little bit less, but around about 10 inches of water. Uh, so it was quite well immersed um, in water. I've had it sitting, it's now around about 9, I think it's, uh, it's half past 10 now. So I've had it sitting in a um, warm, well ambient temperature. Um, house now for around about 12 hours, uh, maybe a little bit less, about 11 hours. Um, it's been at room temperature, so it's been drying out naturally, and I'm going to try and get it working. So remember, this has been immersed in about around about 10 foot, uh, around about 10 inches of water. Uh, so the chances of it working are not very good. But I'm going to walk you through the steps that we need to at least have a chance of getting this thing working again. So, I've got a little bit of footage from earlier when it was clearly wet. And as you saw from that video there, um, you could clearly see water around the uh, around the vent area, around this mesh mesh area here. Um, and it's still wet to the touch now, I'm not sure if the camera can pick up um, the little bits of water on my hand. Um, but it is still wet to the touch now, I will try and get another view of the camera, uh, another view of the um, system, just see if we can see, yeah we can see a few little water droplets and things like that on there still now, so I apologise for that bad audio by the way, uh, I was right by the camera, so yeah, come on, focus, okay there we go. Alright, so we're going to do our best, see if we can get this working, um, it's a nice little machine and I will admit I have already had it open, I do know what's in here um, but I'll walk you through what's in here once we open it up and um, I'll show you what we've got Alright, so we're going to start by taking off the top or taking off the side and this is quite stiff And unfortunately, there's an air intake um, just there on the side panel, so a lot of water did get in through the side panel. Um, and when I actually took it out of the skip, um, a hell of a lot of water dropped out. Uh, it was kind of like a flood, so it looked probably like a shower running for about 10 seconds. So quite a lot of water in there, uh, but we're going to try at least. So I don't know how long it was in the skip. Uh, unfortunately, but the case is in pretty rough shape inside. It, might, it does just need a little bit of a clean and things. We'll, we'll do that another time and hopefully get this uh, machine back up to scratch. So like I say, it's a Dell Optiplex 790. It's a pretty decent little machine. Um, I have looked at the service tab already and it's been upgraded from its original spec. Um, so this is exactly how it comes. And if we just take a look inside, first of all, the hard drive was removed. This was from a business, I'm not going to say where, but it was from a business. There was also a Windows 10 refurbed PC COA on the top. 
obviously I've took that off I've got the hardware here so I can legally do that but I've took that off and put it on my own PC it gives me a nice legit copy of Windows if I ever need it so uh, yeah everything apart from the hard drive is here um, nothing at all seems to be missing uh, we've got the PSU we've got a DVD RW drive uh, we've got 8 gigs of RAM and this is genuinely what was in the machine so I use DDR4 RAM so I don't have any DDR3 RAM anymore we'll just take out that memory there as you can see from the uh, from the slots there it's DDR3 I'm just going to try and get a close up of this they are matching pairs as well um, this has obviously been upgraded because it's um, HP RAM, we're just going to try and get it to focus there there we go so we've got some two slots of 4 gigabyte uh, PC3 10600 UDIM um, memory um, it's SK Hynix uh, so average brand, not the best, not the worst um, so we've got a matching pair of 4 gig sticks there Pop them to one side for a moment. We're going to try and get the camera to focus. There we go. Okay. Um, second of all, we need a screwdriver. Just so as we can take out the um, CPU heatsink. So I believe this is a stock Intel uh, heatsink with custom Dell fan I think um, and I presume it's going to be stock from Dell at least um, but it looks to be a stock Intel heatsink so the key to taking a heatsink off is to work corner to corner to avoid any unnecessary pressure um, on both the motherboard and the CPU socket and as well as the actual heatsink as well so go corner to corner, doesn't really matter which corner um, so if you start if you start on this corner here you want to work your way down to this corner here then go to that corner and then go to that corner so yeah that is the best way just a little tip and I've actually lost where I was uh, on the corners at least never mind that's fine uh, so we've got that corner out And I've actually not taken my own advice here, um, just because I'm talking and I forgot where I was, but that's fine. I mean, it's not necessary to, to go corner to corner. seem to want to play ball ok there we go and the final one which being a little bit stubborn there we go ok so it's definitely not stock fan I think it's a custom fan for Dell so the fan this is how immersed it was in water the fan and the heatsink are completely clean not a speck of dust on there at all so it must have been pretty deep I would say pretty deep in water oh right. the camera's probably going to lose focus again I'm going to put that to one side Okay, so next we have the CPU, and this was all genuinely in there, like I said I have, out, I have had this open, but all of this was genuinely in there when I found it, I don't know if any of it works, but it was all included when I found this system, um, and the place where I did have it, I must say, I did actually, I have actually had permission from them before to root through their skips and things like that for scrap metal, 
Um, I usually get bags of cable, um, the odd motors, um, bits of copper, uh, bits of slate and things like that. So I have had permission before so I must say that. Don't go through company skips unless you have um, express permission from the company. Okay, so the CPU. Um, so if we just get it to focus here. Oops, okay. Drop it, never mind. So the CPU um, is the heatsink, uh, the CPU cooling gel is still on there but it's a little bit wet and rough. So I'm going to give that a quick clean um, and I'll be back in a second. Alright, uh, so that's a bit of a rough, a bit of a rough clean. Uh, I'm trying to get the camera to focus. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pick that up properly on the camera, uh, but it is an Intel Core i5 2400S. So it's a quite core, uh, four cores, four threads, 2.5 gigahertz. Um, it's not the best processor again, but it's an i5. It will do the job um, and it will run a lot of applications quite happily and merrily. So not a bad little processor there. Okay. Um, so basically it's got a DVD rewriter. Um, an i5 2400s and 8 gigs of RAM. It's missing a hard drive. I've got boxes of them, so that's not a problem. So now we're going to go ahead and walk through the steps we need to take in order to draw it out uh, and have a chance at basically recovering this system. So the first thing we need is a lot of time and a lot of patience. Now, you can't just take it straight out of water and think that an hour is going to be enough time because it's not. Um, usually, I would recommend 48 to 72 hours of natural air drying. So, what I mean by that is take off the sides, take everything out of the case and let it dry naturally um, on a towel of some sort to absor absorb any water that drips off it. So let it dry naturally on towels or some sort of, some sort of absorbing paper uh, so that you can absorb the liquid that comes off it. Uh, let that, let that uh, dry naturally for around about 72 hours changing the absorbent paper or towels quite regularly say every 12 to 14 hours. Uh, so that is what I would usually recommend and then giving everything a clean, making sure there's no water at all and then putting it all back together. But unfortunately we don't have time to wait for 72 hours. So we want to, we want to try and get this working right away. So I'm going to go ahead and strip this down now. I'm going to take every single part out including the buttons at the front and things like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and get it working. And one thing I've just noticed is one of the clips that actually broke on the case. That's not really a big deal, um, but it's a bit of a shame because it's a really, really nice case. But never mind, that's fine.
Hello guys, we're back. Took a little coffee break there after I finished stripping down this computer. But we're pretty much done here. So I've stripped out all the components, um, absolutely, absolutely everything top to toe, including the fan. Um, all except for the power button. And there is a reason for that, and that is that I don't really want to chance uh, breaking the plastic from the power button here um, during removal. Um, it does look a little bit flimsy and fragile. So I'm not going to remove that, but that's not a problem. All the other components have been removed and we can go ahead and start, clean, first of all, cleaning up this case. And now I've actually removed the components from the board, you can see that the water was quite deep um, into the board uh, or onto the board. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm going to try and get a little video, a little picture um, of some water droplets. Uh, nope, don't think the camera's ah, there you go, right in the centre, you can see a little water droplet there, that is genuinely from underneath the board, um, I haven't put any water on this at all, um, I promise you faithfully. So, you can see that the water did go quite deep into the computer, and I only noticed that obviously once I've taken the motherboard out, um, so hopefully we can get it working first of all what I need to do is clean the processor so I'm going to give this a proper clean now um, and remove all the old compound gel from the CPU um, and I've got some wet wipes here some baby wipes these have been dried out um, these are actually left over from my from my son um, I bought a fresh pack and opened the fresh pack um, before I'd use this pack and they've just sat on the kitchen side uh, for the past couple of days and dried out so we're going to use these to give this a little clean and get it all nice and shiny so we can put fresh compound gel on the CPU once we're ready to so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I know what you're thinking why are you using a wet wipe on a CPU if you're trying to recover the computer from water damage well it's had enough water I don't think a little wet wipe is going to hurt even if they are dried out, there's still going to be some moisture in it. But it's really not going to hurt it any more than it's already been hurt anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this nice and clean all around the edges. I don't want any old compound gel on this. And the reason for that is it could have some water in it that could affect the CPU once it's actually been turned on. So another one here I'll just put that, put that to one side Want to make sure we get into all the edges of the lid on this CPU and just make sure it's all nice and clean. And drop me a comment in the video in the uh, comment section below guys if you've made it this far thank you all for sticking with me this is going to be a fairly long video um, if we want to get everything done right all right that's about as clean as i'm going to get it i think uh, just check for any more There we go, that should be fine. I'm just going to give the um, the contact pins a little bit of a better clean. A little bit of compound gel transfer from my fingers onto the actual chip. 
that's about as clean as we're going to go there uh, so so like I say we want to get this as nice, nice and clean uh, remove any old compound gel from this uh, if we can just get this to focus So as you can see, it's an Intel Core i5-2400S. And that's nice and clean there. So there's the first part done. The second part is to clean, obviously, the heatsink. Heat uh, get any old compound gel off this, because otherwise it's just going to transfer on. And if we just take a look at that there, you can actually see how much moisture is in that old compound gel. Uh, or thermal paste, if you want to call it that. So, we're going to get this nice and clean as well, just so as we don't get any old paste transfer onto the CPU later on. Get rid of that one. And use a fresh wipe. And there's actually a fair bit stuck. There's actually a fair bit stuck on the uh, heat sink around the edges. I want to make sure we get all of that off as well. Just a word of warning guys if you are using if you are cleaning a heat sink and giving it a proper clean be careful because the fins are fairly sharp and um, you don't want to end up in hospital with um, slices all over your hands so just be careful there while you are cleaning this out uh, try to avoid touching the fins as much as possible um, i've had some pretty nasty cuts off these things all right that's uh, fairly clean uh, i mean there's a little bit stuck a few marks where the um, paste was stuck down pretty good. Um, this has obviously been well used. I mean, it is a refurb PC after all, according to the uh, certificate of authenticity. So, well, nice and clean there. You can see around the edges there's a few marks where it was stuck. Try and get that to focus. Ah, it's not going to focus. That's fine. It's all nice and clean anyway. Um, so there's the next part. Now the next part is going to be obviously drying everything out. So we're going to first of all start off with the case because it's nice and easy. And um, we're actually going to be using one simple tool for this. You may have noticed it in the background. Um, just try and get this to focus. Come on. Alright, so you may have noticed we're going to be using a hairdryer. Uh, now we've got two settings on this, we've got low heat and um, high heat. We are going to be using the low heat setting. Now it's important to remember that these are electrical components and you don't want to get them too hot, um, especially the motherboard. I mean the CPU can handle around about 105 degrees before it starts hitting the danger zone but you don't want to get especially the motherboard and the memory slots too hot uh, to avoid any further damage so if you're using the high setting then be sure to keep it at a safe enough distance where it's not going to get overly hot alright so we're going to go ahead and start drawing out this case hmm.
All right, all right, I forgot to switch it on. And I will will actually be using the high setting for the case because that doesn't really matter too much about any heat sensitive components because there's nothing in there. All right, that should be pretty much dry, I guess. So next, we're going to move on to the front of the case, and then we're going to start working on the actual components. Now, the reason I'm doing the case as well is because we're going to be putting everything back together and testing it in this case. Uh, we want this in an original condition and we don't want to have to spend any more money than we absolutely need to. So we're going to be using all the original components, hopefully. I think we might have kicked into overheating mode here. Alrighty guys, welcome back. It took a couple of minutes, but we managed to get the hairdryer back on. So we're going to go ahead and carry on doing this. We might have to do this a couple of times, um, because the hairdryer seems to be getting a little bit warm. And it's kicking itself into protection mode. So we're going to continue in low heat mode. Uh, it might take a little bit longer, but it should get the job done. Go ahead and let that cool down for just a second while we find the next component to work on. So if you notice we're going in a theme here, we're going to work on the case first and then we're going to get the actual components done as well. That gives the components a little bit more time to dry out naturally. What we may have to do, which I didn't anticipate before, or as I did but I just forgot, um, is we might have to find a way to strip this, strip this down and just dry out all the components in this. Um, and Judging by the actual design of the case, uh, oh actually there they are, there's a screw so we should be able to strip that down and get that dried out as well. So next we're going to go for the front I.O. ports. Uh, this is going to be rather difficult because of the metal case and the things like that. But we're just going to try and get in as many of the holes and things as we can with the heat on high heat mode. Just because we need to try and get into the um, little gaps and nooks and crannies and things like that. 
So I'm going to go for high heat mode on this. And I'm going to be careful I don't burn myself. So what I'm going to do is save damage in my green screen. I'm going to place it on top of here. And just try and work around it. There you go. Okay. Alright, so that should be done. Yeah, that should be fine anyway, at least. Um, so while we're waiting for that to cool down, what I'm going to do is... Well, that metal's really hot. Uh, what I'm going to do is, while I'm waiting for that to cool down, I'm going to go ahead and strip this down just so we can get to the internal components inside and give it a proper dry out. And we can also take a look at what we're dealing with inside there as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I can find my screwdriver, there's one. So we're just using a standard Phillips screwdriver for this. Uh, some, power, some power supplies may be different, they may use torx bits or they may use some sort of a clip. Uh, Dell power supplies are really very simple. And this has actually only got uh, just four SATA ports on here um, as well as the standard power connectors no, no option for a graphics card no options for expansion uh, nothing like that but never mind that's fine actually got to just cut this little cable tie here so we can actually get to the power supply or so we can actually remove the case <coughs> we're just going to go ahead and use some pliers and just twist this off and uh, be careful not to damage any wires otherwise we have an additional repair on our hands there we go it should just come right off now Do be careful when you're messing with these power supplies, they will still hold a lot of power inside the capacitors um, even after um, it's been powered off. These capacitors can hold power for up to five, four or five years um, and it will give you a pretty nasty shock if you touch in the wrong place. So do be careful with that, especially if you're dealing with a water damaged power supply as well. Um, purely because water, electricity, high power, it's not going to go well for you. So do be careful there. Alright, so that's stripped down. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to work on the power supply. Then we're going to pull all the case back together. Uh, or we're actually going to do the power supply and this fan here. Um, and then we're going to pull all the case back together and then work on these uh, internal PC components afterwards. So let's see if this hair dryer is cooled down enough. Maybe not. There we go. Maybe jump a little bit. Alright, so let's give this a little dry. that's starting to smell a little bit like burning so I'm going to stop there with the power supply it seems fairly dry inside anyway so I don't know whether it actually hit it uh, or whether it's just dried naturally um, but that got incredibly hot um, I'm going to go ahead while we're waiting for this to cool down I'm going to go ahead and put this back together and then we're going to quickly dry the fan out and then throw it all back into the case or throw the case back together rather so this is still rather hot so I need to be careful here um, 
the one thing I did enjoy was this metal shroud, uh, this metal casing, um, and the reason for that, simply because it doesn't seem wet at all. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that the main internal components were dry, um, which now they seem to be, so should be okay. So again, be careful while you're putting this casing back on, because if you touch the wrong place, metal on metal on the actual PCB, it's going to cause a short on one of the capacitors and of course if you're touching the metal casing you're going to get a pretty nasty shock again so just be careful that is incredibly hot still go screw all this back together all right so power supply is nice and dry back together um, we're gonna put that to one side and hopefully the Hair dry will come back on and we can just finish up the remaining parts of this case. So it seems that this uh, fan, giving it a closer look, the fan didn't ha actually get uh, much water in it, if any. I can see bits of dust on the actual fan itself. So judging by that, there's pro it probably didn't get any water. Still going to give it a quick blow, uh, just to be on the safe side. Alright, so it seems that everything that uh, everything case related should be fine now. Uh, everything's nice and dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together. Uh, looking on my green screen, I can actually see little tiny droplets of water. Um, if you can see, my finger is completely dry there. And then you can see there on the green screen, I've just pulled that water off. So it was wet somewhere. There's a few droplets um, spread around the green screen. So, you know, the hair dryer seems to be doing its job so far. So I'm going to have a little bit of luck and get this bulb working again. And we can start having some fun with it. All right, so let's get this case back together.
all right so i don't i don't know what it's to um i mean i'll plug it in when i get back to the motherboard um i'll just leave it hanging i'll figure out what it's to later um this is a problem with dells they use unfamiliar parts um, or unfamiliar random parts i think it's just some sort of an led or uh, a case sensor or something like that so i'm not really too worried about it um, for the time being uh, but we're going to go ahead and get this case back together as best we can so like i said earlier one of the clips on this was broke unfortunately um i'm actually going to snap that off that clip there because i don't want it falling out i'm going to get rid of that and the case is still fairly secure so i'm not worried worried about that too much so i'm going to go ahead and sort out this cable management again so that's down there ready next we're going to go ahead and put the PSU back in and I always put it the wrong way don't know why I just do There's the PSU back in. Next we need the fan. And I believe it's that way. This is an exhaust fan and it does make a difference which way the fans actually go. Again, we're going to go corner to corner, which makes it easier with this one, with the fan. I'm just going to pull the rubber bung back through. I really hate these things. So terrible. just reach yeah that should be fine um all right so the fans back in the psu is back in the front io is back in um that doesn't well it's actually damaged but uh the cat is damaged but whatever it doesn't really need to be dried out so we'll just drop that back in there for a while and that is fine that doesn't need drying either um i'm not sure i think i actually already dried that and uh, that might be why it's already dry so i'm going to go ahead and just pop this back on for now and we're going to work on the components all right so there's the case completely clean um nice and dry uh, not clean just dry 
uh, and there we go ahead and work on the components. So I'm going to push these to the one side for now. Okay, dog. So first up, of course, is going to be the motherboard. Now this actually seems rather dry anyway. It may have dried out naturally. I know it was immersed in water because, like I say, there was water underneath the board. So I know it's been immersed in water. Um, I don't know the con condition of it. And bear in mind as well that this board was actually thrown out. Uh, this computer was thrown out, so I don't know the condition of it anyway. It may have just been a company upgrade. It may have been faulty. Um, who knows? But we're going to go ahead and try and get it on anyway. Okie doke. So, the board should be completely dry now, uh, or about as dry as it's going to get. That is very, very warm. Uh, I'm gonna, just going to give the... Ow! Wow. Uh, I'm just going to give the CPU socket a bit of a clean. Um, and the reason for that is because I can see some uh, thermal paste around the CPU socket. Um, retention arm um, or retention bracket so I'm going to give that a bit of a clean like I said earlier I don't want any old thermal paste on the board at all uh, be it on the um, retention arm or on the actual CPU <coughs> so I'm going to give that a little bit of a clean there there's a little bit of thermal paste lodged inside the PCI Express slot as well um, I think it's PCI Express 16 x16 so i'm going to very carefully remove that by just uh flicking it out with the screwdriver like that and then very carefully i'm going to give the retention bracket a bit of a clean i'm going to move it away from the cpu pins because i don't want to bend them if i bend them it's going to brick the board even more and i'm just going to give it a wipe over here and this is still incredibly hot. Uh, I must remember to let this cool down before it's powered on. And the bottom looks fine. Okay. And I'm just going to inspect the pins on this. And they all seem fine. So the CPU socket seems in good shape. Um, I've already visually inspected the capacitors as best I can. I will give them another quick visual inspection now. I just want to make sure there are no blown capacitors on this board before I actually fire it up. Um, and it doesn't look like there are going to be any blown capacitors. But it's all be good. So I can't see any real reason why this board won't work. Um, Fingers crossed, I mean, I have a spare CPU to test, um, I have spare memory to test if I need to. Well, actually, no, I don't. Um, I don't have spare memory. Um, so if the memory has blown, I mean, the chances of two slots blowing, it's uh, still fairly high because it's been in water, but it's still, it's still fairly slim at the same time. It sounds a bit weird, but it's true. So we need to focus here, come on. There we go. Um, so yeah, there's the motherboard done. Uh, we're going to put that to one side. Um, and next we're going to work on the um, CPU, I guess. I mean, this CPU can stand fairly hot temperatures. 
um, there's actually some thermal compounds still on this CPU I've just noticed just around the centre of the chip I'm just going to try and get that off, I don't think I'm going to it shouldn't affect the contact too much, it seems to be dried on there um, so we're just going to leave that I suppose uh, I'm going to go ahead and just give this a quick blow I'm not going to do it too much with the heatsink uh, with the um, CPU uh, but I'm going to try and cool it I'm going to try and dry it down a little bit That's about all I'm going to put that through. That's very, very hot now. Uh, it's about as hot as it would get uh, under normal load. So I'm not going to put that through too much. Um, it was underneath the uh, heatsink, so it should be fine. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and do the memory. Again, I'm not going to put this under too much stress, uh, heat stress. Uh, I don't want to cause any unnecessary damage to the chips. So I'm going to do them both at the same time, and I'm going to do it quick and um, hot and quick. very very hot I like it uh, should be fine uh, and hopefully that's all working CPU is done uh, next is the heatsink and fan and we've gone into thermal shutdown mode right, we're going to leave that a little bit and we're going to start putting some of this together I'm going to give that five minutes and we're going to put this into there, I think. First of all, we'll install the memory in DIMM slots one and three. And if you notice earlier, I took the button battery out while I was drawing it just to make sure I got underneath the uh, battery terminals as well. Uh, so we put the button battery back in and the good thing is that will clear the BIOS as well so we shouldn't get any BIOS related issues or any firmware related issues as well that should reset the BIOS for us next we're going to install carefully install the CPU and because we've removed the thermal compound from the CPU we're going to need to replace that So I'm not going to use the expensive stuff, we've just got a, um, a tube of Hydra Thermal Grease Gold. Um, it's not really gold, it's not the best stuff at all. But we're going to use this and put a little dab of this on, just to make sure that the heat sink, the CPU is properly cooled. So we just need a little sprinkle in the middle and that will spread itself. Okay. So, it's not letting us use that yet. So we're going to go ahead and just install this into the case. Pop that to one side. Move that aside and on that. And first of all, one thing I always forget is going to be the IO shield. Now, this seems fairly dry, however. No, it's not actually. I think there's a bit of water underneath this sticker, so I'm going to need to dry this off. Oh, 
okie doke so we can install the heat sink now uh, onto the board that's cooled down a lot and I've just got compound gel all over me never mind wow that's not cooled down that ow and that's going to go that way ouch So we're going to line that up properly and again like earlier we're going to go corner to corner on the heat sink Alright, that is properly installed, all nice and tight, a little bit awkward with those shorter screwdrivers there, but that's all in. Um, there is one final thing to dry, and that's going to be the, oh sorry, a couple of final things to dry, and that's going to be these two SATA cables here, and the disk drive here as well. That seems fairly dry as it is, but I don't know what the condition is like inside, so I'm going to leave this till last, and we're going to get... This motherboard, this backplate, um, reinstalled in the computer, um, or reinstalled in the case, and then we're going to dry off these last two components, and we can fire it up and see if it's working. Alright oh, guys, so I had to take a little break there, uh, my son got a little bit scared because of the fireworks, but we're going to go ahead and um, just dry out these last two components, uh, I know I said I'd do it afterwards, but I'm going to do it now, uh, just so I can get everything back together and hopefully get it working so we're going to go ahead and move these off to the side and we're going to need to take this apart um, and I've just a second noticed this but on this disk drive you can see where the water's got to uh, got to the disk drive so it's definitely going to be wet inside there uh, so we're going to take this apart, give it a good dry out and put it all back together. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take that little holding screw out. And then we're going to need a smaller screwdriver for this. So, inside here, uh, right right off the bat, there's water droplets all on the inside of this. So you can clearly see that this part of the computer was severely immersed in water. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just dry this out as best we can. And judging by the PCBs as well. Um, particularly this little controller board down here uh, it's quite wet you can see it's quite shiny where it's where it's all wet I mean there's nothing on my finger uh, well, actually that's not too bad um, a few little bits on my finger um, that's not too bad I guess considering how much droplets was on the lid um, let's go ahead and clean these out as best we can. We might find that this disk drive probably won't work, uh, but hopefully the main board and things do.
and finally just the connectors on these two SATA ports. Okay, let's pop this back on. There we go. So that's that back together, um, and I believe we're pretty much done. So we're going to go ahead and put it all back together now. Um, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a wipe down there. Get rid of that. And let's go ahead and start putting this, this thing back together now. Start with the disc drive. Um, I did forget one little thing. And that is this little screw right here because this stops it from sliding uh, vibrating up and down on the one side of the disc drive when it's in use back in silly me silly silly me it's not going to slot back in with the fascia on So we're going to use a bit of a bigger Phillips bit for this. I think that's the wrong screw, I think it goes there just because of the shape of it there we go and that one to get a bit of a better seating position here All right. next we're going to go for the IO shield really simple with this we just clip it into place um, PS2 ports always go nearer to um, the power supply furthest away from the expansion slots so fairly simple we just push this in and make sure we move that cable out of the way first. And this be, I'll say this is fairly simple, and then it always turns out to be really awkward. And the 
might have slightly bent this during removal. I did push it out quite hard. Okay, if it came out, it can certainly go back in. I think the case is actually slightly damaged. So it doesn't seem to want to go in fully on that corner. I think because the case is slightly bent, um, I'm not sure if the camera can quite see just by the expansion slots. Uh, it's kind of pushing inwards a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, the motherboard, once it's being held on the actual case with the screws, the motherboard will push that in. So it should be fine. Uh, next we're going to go ahead and install the motherboard. And I do need to find out where this cable went first of all. I think it was down here. Yep, yeah, there we go. So like I, say, like I said earlier, I don't know what that cable's for. So I'm just going to leave it loose inside the case. Uh, it should be fine. It might just be an LED. I will find out once it's powered on. And this is actually rather awkward. Line everything up. So yeah, it is slightly out of place, but once the screws start going in, it should be fine. And I'm going to need a long screwdriver for this. when the screwdrivers are magnetic this one of course doesn't want to mag uh, doesn't want to stick so I'm going to find a little magnet I can't seem to find my magnet, but never mind. And I've also dropped a screw inside the fan, which is going to cause an issue. So I do need to try and get that out. There we go. So I've got that back. So this is supposed to be a magnetic screwdriver. Oh, I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm going to get these lined back up again. Hmm. 
So this is the awkward part um, and the reason for that is simply because the IO shield isn't lining up properly so it's causing a few problems with alignment where the case is concerned uh, where the screws are lining up to the motherboard so I do need to like kind of push it and prod and poke around a little bit until it goes into alignment so there's one screw Should the line up now it seems to be fine that is it I believe I don't think we have any spare screws so it seems like I've put everything back where it should be uh, I mean I know I have but uh, everything seems good so I'm going to install the front IO There goes the front eye out and the P1 connector, P2 connector sorry, uh, the 4 pin ATX CPU power, there we go. Next we've got the 24 pin power. Uh, 
Next we have Power 4, the disk drive. So this disk drive, I've actually noticed, is already damaged as well. Um, so it's it's actually got uh, the SAT, SATA port. It's actually slightly bent. I don't know if that's occurred during installation or um, whether I did it taking it out. I think it was done when I take, took it out. Um, uh, I think it was already done before I take, took it out. So. Uh, the, I mean, it may not work anyway. Uh, chances are, I don't think the disk drive is going to work. Just going to tidy up a couple of these cables so we can carry on working. Next, those SATA powers are for the hard drive. Next, we have the power switch, and this is very important because we can't short the pins on this switch on this board. Uh, being a Dell board, being a Dell board, they have custom. Uh, connectors and it makes it really awkward to be able to short out the pins and things like that now, I mean it is possible um, but the LED pin and the the uh, power LED and the power switch are both on the same connector so it just makes it a little bit more awkward right what are we missing uh, we're missing the fan system fan and I believe, um, thank you for st sticking with me, but I believe that is it. I think we've dried everything out. Um, everything's reinstalled as it should be. I do, of course, need to install a hard drive in this thing because there wasn't one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get one of those now. So this is going to be really, really heavy. My big box, my big box of spare hard drives. Um, so I'm not going to go for a large size. So all of these here, all of my 500s and my one terabyte drives and my 750s are not going to go in this. And the reason for that is if the board, if the power supply is damaged. And it damages a hard drive. Um, if I put, I don't know, like an 80 gigabyte, such as this one, for example, uh, if I put an 80 gigabyte in it, it's not really going to do much to the drive. Um, I'll get, yeah, an 80 gigabyte will do. Um, and I'm not going to be risking too much in the way of my own parts for this. I mean, I will stick a couple of 500s or a terabyte hard drive in here if I get it working and then obviously sell sell the computer. Uh, but I'm not going to risk it until I know it's all working as it should do and until it's gone through quite a few tests. So we'll move that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and install this drive. So, like I say, I know this drive works, uh, or at least it did last time I powered it on. Uh, I used to use this, strangely as it sounds, in a RAID array. Uh, I had like eight drives in a RAID array. Uh, I think it's that way. There we go, and as I said earlier as well, this thing is damaged, um, so we're just going to install this as best we can, and obviously if it's all working then I'll just buy a replacement caddy, they're quite easy to find, I think I've got some lying around as well somewhere, there we go. That's all nice and secure. There 
there we go that locks in nicely uh, so next we're going to provide some power to this drive and um, these cables are so awkward there we go so we have power next we need to plug in the SATA connections start with a black one for the disk drive and into the motherboard tuck that away and then a red one for the hard drive I know it's quite irrelevant, but we're going to do some cable management anyway because we'll only get, we'll only have to do it later. Um, why would they use such long connectors or such long cables? certainly doesn't help the cable management aspect of things all right we're pretty much done i'm going to go ahead and get some peripherals and then we're going to test this baby all righty guys so i've managed to round up a few peripherals um and unfortunately on this endeavor i didn't foresee not being able to find my VGA to HDMI converters. Uh, I found my display port to HDMI converter. Uh, I found my DVI to HDMI converter, but I couldn't find the VGA one. So, um, in a bit to finish this video tonight, um, I've managed to find out this crappy little, um, what is it? Uh, it's a HD 6450 graphics card by Zeus. Uh, it's not the best graphics card, but it's got uh, VGA, DVI and HDMI on it. It's not in the best condition. And there's dirt in some of the ports in the DVI and, H and VGA ports. But the HDMI port does work. I have just tested it in my own machine. So I know this works. So I, I am going to have to install this just for testing purposes. Um, I should get rid of that for a second so I am going to have to install this just to just for testing purposes um, so as I can use HDMI on the computer um, I couldn't use the DVI port on the board because unfortunately um, when I've installed the IO shield it hasn't installed right and there's a little piece of metal covering up part of the uh, DVI port so I can't convert it into HDMI so I'm going to install this graphic card really quickly uh, it'll only take a second and then we can get to testing hopefully we don't blow up so still the same computer guys um, we're just going to pop out this top one wow, that's really really bent Ah, look, there's my uh, display port to HDMI converter, which I can't use. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this here, but there's a little piece of metal covering up the display port, so I can't use it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and figure out how to pop this out. That hurt a little bit. 
so we're going to go ahead and remove that and just install this graphics card the good thing is this graphics card doesn't need any additional power it runs straight from the 75 watt on the PCI Express port and this case is really in bad shape but uh, we're going to do our best slightly bent because of the way the case is at the back I mean you probably just got through in the skip but uh, I'm not sure if you can see that bend there as well I mean we can always straighten the case out afterwards and uh, take a little hammer to it but for now we're just going to work with what we've got So that's installed, so it's time for the moment of truth. So there is a close up of the system without any water. Looking good. So let's fire it up and see what happens. Now there's no power switch on this PSU, so I can't just quickly flick the switch and then just run away sort of thing so i've got to try and do my best here i'm going to install all the peripherals first we'll start with hdmi okay and of course we need a keyboard to get to the bios and then the power here we go did have life for a brief second hmm. and we're not getting any output ah hang on really hate this screen wow we have power we have life I'm going to leave that running for a little while uh, and I'm going to try and get a better angle on the screen so it says that the uh, configuration has been reset um, which is why I actually removed the battery earlier and the brightness really isn't very good on that screen at all with this camera uh, now the lines that you're seeing on the screen are not down to the computer they are simply down to the brightness um, and the way that the camera is angled so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the light so as we can see a little bit better Nope, that's no better at all. Uh, in fact, that was considerably worse. I mean, it's not down to. Well, actually, uh, no, it's just a shiny. It's just a glare on the screen. It's fine. 
so he actually seems to be running fine it's nice and quiet uh, it's not powered off yet I mean we did get a few a few brief moments where it shut, it shut itself down a couple of times but we're gonna go and keyboard works I need a mouse because I don't like using keyboards on BIOSes Now is as good of a time as ever, ever to uh, ignore my cables and things in the background. I was hunting uh, for obviously the cables for the computer. I'm just going to adjust this camera here. And we're going to focus. Come on. No. Oh, that. Never mind. Um, do need to try and get that to focus so that we can see on camera what we're doing. I'm not going to be able to get a clear picture there so but now is as good of a time as ever to test out the uh, USB port at the front and let's just reset it don't know what key it is to access the uh, BIOS there we go just press F1, F2 and, F and uh, delete always comes up So this thing is lighting up 1, 2 and 3 at the front and I don't know why. Could be a slight short in something. But we have a mouse. Albeit not a working mouse. So it seems like some things are shorting out. Again, yeah, see, it's only moving up and down. Uh, you can't see that on the screen, but it only seems to be moving up and down. I mean, this could be down to the fact that. Um, There's a piece of metal touching the back of the board. Uh, I would have to investigate that further. So let's try and get back into the BIOS. Or it could just be um, that the BIOS doesn't like a wireless mouse. Maybe. I am using a wired keyboard. Wow, it's loading free NAS on this hard drive. Hmm, 
come on, let me access the uh, the BIOS now. So it seems there are a few faults on this on this uh, board. Yeah, it won't let me access the BIOS now. For some unknown reason. But the weird thing is the keyboard's working. So I think it's best now to take the motherboard out. And... Run it without the case, I guess. Oh, so we're in the BIOS now. Rather, we will be in a short while. Ah, there we go. So, there is a short somewhere. Um, I will find that. Uh, so, system information it shows 8 gig of memory installed. DIM 1 and 2 are empty, DIM 3 and 4 are populated. Uh, the processor information is shown in Intel Core i5 2400S. Um, I'm just going to take the camera. I'm just trying to get a better view of that. Um, and it's showing 4 core, four core count, um, clocked at 2.5. Um, minimum 1.6, maximum 2.5. Uh, so I don't think this board actually it should have it should have turbo. Um, it may not show up on there. Boot sequence, diskette drive is registered in the um, hard drive. Uh, ST 38215AS. Uh, date and time are going to be wrong, obviously. Um, system configuration. Drives, um, it's registering the DVD drive. Um, let's see if that works. Nope, it is registering it pretty faulty, uh, as I suspected that would be faulty. Um, but again, that was pretty severely immersed in water. Uh, uh, losing a disk drive is not a big deal. Smart reporting, um, that's not enabled. Uh, video multi display. Oh wow! All right, and it's just opened. All right. Yeah, so it seems a bit random. Um, that could be one of the shorts on the drive on the board. I'll go away. Uh, security admin password not set. System password not set. Hard drive not set. Um. Computrace is deactivated. Nice. Okay. So we don't need to worry about this ever being um, locked out. Computrace is a bit annoying. And so is that disk drive. Um, performance, multi core, all cores enabled. Um, Intel speed steps enabled. Turbo boost, turbo, boost, turbo boost is enabled. Uh, system logs, let's take a look inside here. BIOS events. Uh, so 25th of the 1st, 2017. So 25th of January this year, uh, or last year now, because it is 2am. So the 25th of January this year, <coughs> um, this system was actually upgraded. Um, the amount of system memory has changed at 1.51pm on the 8th of August 2017. Okay, so it's been upgraded again. 28th of May, invalid configuration. Oh, sorry, no, that's today. Never mind. Um, okay, so it's... 
it's fa fairly recent they've been upgraded. I uh, don't know why they took this out. Image server. Uh, that's not going to work. We haven't got internet. Maintenance. Service tag. Uh, no asset tag. It allows you to create one. Uh, virtualization. Everything seems to be working apart from the um, disk drive and maybe the mouse but I don't know what again I don't know why that is I'm going to go ahead and install Windows um, or try and install Windows and see what happens so I do need to take this hard drive out because I need it I need to be able to use this hard drive sometime in the future um, because that was running my free NAS config and I need to recover the files off that but I'm going to go ahead and pair this down for a moment and I'm taking that disk drive out because that's obviously not working I'm going to go ahead and put a 500 gigabyte blank drive in it now I know it's working Okay, we have a 500 gig drive. Uh, we need a SATA port. And uh, nope, we're going to get rid of that one and put it into here. So let's install Windows and see what happens. Dell likes the disk drives to have to be upside down, I guess. Don't ask why, because I don't know. Come on. Why is that being so complicated? Alright, let's just get rid of cable management. There's a bit more room to play with. There we go. And again, get rid of cable management for the SATA cable. Click. There we go. So, in goes a 500 gig hard drive and on goes the machine whoops we need a mouse so let's hopefully be able to use it actually that mouse could have been doing that just to uh, be able to control the options in the middle uh, so it may not have been a short right let's get to the boot actually no we need the uh, we need the boot options first of all we need a windows disk I think I have Windows on here. So let's find out. Is it going to boot? If I don't have it on there, I should have it on the drive. Alright, guys, so as you can see, uh, the recovery of this um, computer was a fantastic success uh, for a computer to be immersed in around about 10 inches of water 
and come out shining seems to be absolutely great stay tuned for part two of this video which i'm going to complete in the next couple of days where i'm going to install windows on this thing and actually test it uh, run a few benchmarks and things like that i installed a decent graphics card in it and we'll try and game on it maybe i don't know uh, but we'll try and do something with it um thank you so much for watching thank you so much for sticking through this um i hope this video helps you to maybe recover your own computer um should anything as tragic as a flood happen um as you can see these computers clearly <laughs> clearly can go through a lot um so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video um drop me a comment down in the comments section below let me know what you think um it would be great if you could hit that subscribe button hit the like button if we can get 100 likes on this video that would be absolutely fantastic um and just a final quick note i have a massive schedule planned for the next year on youtube uh, i'm starting to take youtube a lot more seriously i'm going to be doing a lot more cool stuff like, stuff like this a lot more programming tutorials a lot more how-to videos and things like that um but be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for part two um another final thing as well um i am currently looking for sponsors to sponsor videos so as i can do some cool projects maybe send me some testing products um technology related um or send me some damaged goods that i can try and repair um things like that things i can have fun with and make fun videos and make useful videos with so if you are a company or someone who's willing to sponsor any videos or you have any suggestions for any future videos be sure to drop me a comment down in the comment section below i do read all comments although i don't get time to, re to reply to all of them so drop me a comment in the comment section down below um and you can always hit me up on facebook the link will be in the description uh, to my facebook profile feel free to add me i will i don't mind adding you as long as you tell me you've come from youtube um so just drop me a message on facebook um and i'll add you so all right guys i'm going to wrap this up now but thank you so much for watching um again please hit please hit the like, like button please subscribe and i'll see you all for part two all right guys bye for now